What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Verbal Garbage coming at you hot and live. It's your boy Frankie B on the ones and twos and uh, wanted to get back in the studio, get another one coming out. So, uh, you know, we talked last week, just some of the events, as you've come to expect in the podcast, talking about work, life, bullshit, you know, gaining some weight when you get a little infectious skin disease on your face. So uh, we're still not really sure, guys. I, I've been saying herpes, but I'm pretty sure it was... HPV. I don't even fucking know the difference. We're just splitting hairs at this point. Um, what are you gonna do? I mean, we're dealing with it. We're getting through it. I thought it was gone. There's still a little trace. So I'm getting invited to go train with black belts and UFC fighters, and I can't do it. And I'm just, oh, it sucks. All right, but you get the point, right? So <sighs> jujitsu is my go-to. Can't really do it as much now, so golfing is kind of uh, taking over. You know, get into it right away, start buying all the nice clothes, getting – I've got my third pair of cleats already on the way. Most people don't even know. I'm, in ju- I'm just ridiculous. But getting into bidding wars on eBay is uh, the serotonin ping you need when – we'll circle back to that in a second. But serotonin pings, you know, let's let's make a mental note of that. But so Friday I go golfing. My buddy and I get done work early. Go go out to the course, new course for me. So we're we're just feeling it out, you know. Get to the point where nine holes is is done, and my bud's got to go to work. So we're we're debating, having an internal debate, myself, me, and I. And the debate didn't last long. I I was going to continue to play. I already paid. I'm going to play the 18 holes, whether it be by myself or joining a group. So about a minute goes by, my buddies is gone, and I just uh, literally just walk up to the tee box. These guys are like, "What's up, boys?" And they're all like 65, 75 year old men between there. And they're just kind of like startled at first and like, Hey, how you doing? Long story short, I asked them if I could play with them. They said, of course, uh, we became great friends. We were bantering. We were roasting each other. It was, um, it was really everything you dream of. I, one of the tee shots, like I landed on the, and obviously as a beginner, you suck. So the littlest things are a huge, a huge thing. So one of the greens, uh, I mean, one of the tee shots, I went right on the green on the old nine iron landed right in there, gave me a, an opportunistic role to get the par and I still miss it. But either way, um, and then one of them, I actually used my five wood and actually hit a flag. So pretty, pretty, pretty serious time for me. And then after, you know, I got approached by two of the guys and asked me for my number. And I'm like, you know, we were talking about serotonin pings and if I could find a way to translate, like making friends with, guys my age or 50 to 70 years older i mean i've been in fantasy football leagues with retired people that i met from bartending i mean it's just but you know just getting a little swipe on the old the old tinder room <laughs> it's fucking pathetic i'll tell you i literally wrote like i keep my podcast notes every week just like topics i want to talk about and such and i wrote on here golfing with old random slash hitting flag off tee connecting with olders can get any guy's number, can't get a match to save my life. <laughs> and uh, you know, we continue to spit the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth here on the on the VG show. And on uh, you know, I grew up with some some strapping young lads who, like, you know, my boy Dean growing up with. Hope you're listening. Shout out to him. I mean, he's an absolute dime. His wife is like a 13 out of 10. I mean, this guy is just incredible. And so many guys growing up with, I I, I idolize you guys, you know, it's a crazy game and the older we get the worse we get the more stuck in our ways we get and i try to continue to evolve keep listening to new things listen to people's opinions try new jobs try new hobbies just try everything and see what it's like and i hope that means that i'll avoid the stubborn route that uh my old father has taken on where it's just his way or the highway and i get it as a an older florida republican you are just ingrained in your ways and that's that's how it's going to be my grandmother was very similar, although not much of a re- Republican, I will say. <laughs> yeah. Um, earned that. Hit the links again on a Sunday. Played a full 18. Dreadful front nine. Great back nine. So you, 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 you literally play golf when you're bad for the moments. And my moments include, you know, getting a nine on a part three and then getting a four on a part three and just feeling like I'm God. Hydration station, as Allie Love would say on Peloton. You know, we're just hydrating, guys. So we're pretty used to that it's a staple on the verbal garbage, verbal garbage show by now. But so yeah, Sunday did that, and then I kind of want to do. Um, 
I don't know. I don't have any like great stories from this week, but I just figured there was a lot going on with sports and current events that I would like to kind of cover some of these and we'll do that from there. Right. So as I extend my other little cocktail table and really open up, spread the wings on the little Eagle, we're just going to talk. You know, we got, uh, ah, there we go. We got the NFL draft coming up. We just had a weekend that had UFC fights, Bellator fights, a big boxing match that everybody was tuned into NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, there's just a lot going on. MLB, Phillies are finally starting to click a little bit. Sixers are continuing to break our hearts and lead us on and get us excited and then rip us rip us apart. And we're just – now we're going to end up playing the Celtics and losing to a Boston team is just – it's just not what we want, right? So, Embiid's news just came out. He's got a sprained LCL. I mean, yeah, I thought he was MVP, but – I mean, he still is. But, I mean, that that – game i don't know what it was game three when he was just falling down all over and then resulting in i mean we're just we're in trouble now and boston's got bodies i kind of sound like i'm parroting bill simmons here but i listened to him and then i kind of agree with his takes like boston's got bodies throw it and bead they got the perimeter defenders so definitely a tough matchup but i think we're gonna we're gonna give it our all and wouldn't be a fan if we weren't optimistic right um so i kind of wanted to talk about that boxing match on Saturday night, everyone was hyping it up. The Ryan Garcia and uh, Javante Davis fight. Yeah, I was excited. I mean, two high profile guys that were getting in a little bit of a banter. Uh, I love that. All this fight promotion, it leads, you know, just drives ticket sales, gets more excited, gets the fan base more excited, energized. But my God, has boxing seriously taken an M- uh, backseat to MMA or what? I mean, my dad's generation and all these guys growing up, Boxing was king. Boxing was everything. They thought of the baddest man in the world as the heavyweight champion of boxer and just this and that. And I mean, now you watch it. And I'm not knocking Ryan Garcia. I'm a fan. I like him. He's a beast. I could never do what he does, but and it's not his fault. He agreed to it. But there's uh for those of you who don't know, him and Javante Davis were fighting, and Ryan was technically technically moving down a weight class because he's a little bit bigger. Or right, so I believe. But he um he agreed with Javante because Javante was smart, other, otherwise known as Tank, Tank Davis. He had mandated that Ryan abide by this hydration clause or rehydration clause, which simply states that after you weigh in, you're not allowed to put any, like, more than 10 pounds on. And the argument here, for those of you who aren't as informed with combat sports, boxing, MMA, in the UFC, it's a big thing where guys will, let's say their weight class is 155 pounds. They'll walk around at 175, 180 pounds through training camp, they're shedding weight, and then they got to cut the weight to get down to 155. So you're a much bigger guy going into a smaller weight class. You weigh in the night before the fight, and then as soon as you weigh in, you just you water load, you carb load, and due to how much you're draining your body, and anyone who is listening to this and is like you're wrong please just text me and we'll come you come on the podcast and we can talk about it more knowledgeably because i'm learning all this stuff but essentially when you're 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 depriving your body of a lot of water and water excuse me when you're depriving that you you are able to put on weight much quicker so you're drained and you're i mean you see these guys away and they look like skeletons and they just they have their all their bones or jaws or everything clavicle showing it's just a horrible sight but as soon as they weigh in they get a big meal, they drink a bunch of water, and they just put the weight right back on. It, there's uh, there are stories of guys, you know, losing 30 pounds. And you, this is going to sound fake, but they'll, the night of the fight, they'll put back on 15 to 25 pounds in one day. I mean, it's just insane. So this definitely um, provided to be – proved to be an obstacle for Ryan. That amongst uh, rats, rats in the camp, as he was saying um, – so the hydration clause just in full again is pretty much he wasn't allowed to he so he had to cut all that weight and then he wasn't allowed to replenish and put all that weight back on. A lot of times what you're going to see when people are cutting a lot of weight and they're depriving themselves is their chin's going to be weaker so they're easy, more susceptible to a knockout or the body shots are going to play a lot bigger role. And this fight it was the latter of those two. The body shots had really done Ryan in. Um, and that's kind of bring me to my point real quick. I also mentioned that he had a mole in his camp. There was a boxer that had came out and said that he had injured Ryan in his body in sparring, and then supposedly he told Javante that. Just just no sportsmanship there. I don't like that. I think that's lame. Either way, the body shots were going to hurt him. I mean, it is what it is. But And I just got a notice on my phone as we're doing this. The UFC card I'm going to next week is um, 
in Newark, New Jersey. I'm flying out to go with my brother, my nephew, and my brother-in-law. And there was a co-main event, unfortunately, that was amazing, and it was scratched. Charles Oliveira and Benil Daryush. And now Bilal Muhammad and Gilbert Burns just came in, and Bilal Muhammad's going to be cutting 44 pounds in 11 days. So just just think about that, guys. We talked about the 30-pound herp. I mean, I could uh, – could meet up with Bilal and find out what he's doing for these next 11 days and maybe get some of this herpy weight off. But either way, we're going to keep it moving. You know, I don't need to make contact with anybody recording a podcast. So herpes equals more podcast or whatever you want to call this thing. So yeah, the, the hydration cause really did Ryan in. And that just bruised me to my point. Like one, again, I'm not going to say little body shot. One body shot stopped at the biggest boxing fight of the year. When you got to watch MMA fights and you see a lot of times not only are these guys knocked out and the rest not stopping the fight, they're getting hit four or five, six times after the fight. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but it just shows you kind of the the caliber of warrior that you're dealing with. And, and I'm not trying to generalize here, saying every UFC fighter or MMA fighter is tougher than a boxer, but I just, in the sport is in general, I think it's become a lot more viewer friendly with these boxing fights. You know, you get a main card that's got four to six fights on it, I guess, but everybody only cares about the main event. You watch a UFC card, I'm watching the now. Grant, I'm a diehard fan, but I'm watching the first, first, first fucking prelim all the way to the main event, and you get so many nights where the first and second fights are better than any of the, the high, high placement card, high placement fights on the card are. You know what I mean? So, and shout out to my boy Nico got officially announced against Robbie Lawler. Woo! So that's gonna be incredible. Um, so we talked about that the rehydration clause quickly. I just wanted to touch on live live golf. Uh, I was in Adelaide, Australia. There's a lot of PGA haters hating on live right now. I I'm a fan. I've enjoyed it. I think it's fun. It's different. They got the shotgun start, which is they pretty much will start at all different holes at once instead of having scattered tee times, 1040, 1055. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm just into it in Australia. It was obviously a big time difference. So the, it was a little tough to follow that, but Saturday and Sunday night, I was or Friday and Saturday night. I was watching about an hour and a half to two hours each night of it. Just kind of falling asleep to some golf. Just living, breathing, eating, baby. See what I did there, living. Um, another little note. Hydration. Okay, and again, I apologize to my non-sport fan listeners, but pretty sport-heavy episode. I'll mix in a little political thing in about two, two to five minutes here. But um, NBA playoffs, amazing, fun. I mean, you got... The Heat are up right now, three to one on the eight seed, and the Heat had a win, I believe, two games to even get into the playoffs. And now they're beating the eight seed with the arguably the best player in the NBA over the last three years. They're they're beating them. Um, I just kind of want to touch on this whole load management and the, the way the NBA is going nowadays. Um, there's so many of these guys that I'm not trying to single out Kawhi Leonard here, but he's the main example. You do this load management all year to try to keep them ready for the playoffs, and it proved to be working. I mean, the first two games, he was incredible, but now he's hurt. Uh, and there's just a lot of injuries that are kind of putting a little bit of a, a stain on this first round. I mean, first you got, let's see, you had the John Morant injury. You had the Giannis injury. You had the Tyler Hero injury. You had the, I mean, Joel Embiid's dealing with one now. Um, there's, there's a lot other, De'Aaron Fox just got hurt on the Kings. There, there's a lot more going on. And uh, Draymond Green getting suspended. That whole Harden and Embiid thing where Harden got ejected for some bullshit for a forearm to the nuts, maybe. But Embiid straight up kicked the dude from the bottom in the nuts and he didn't get in trouble. I mean, there's just a lot of officiating that's coming down that's questionable. And maybe I'm just being bitter already as like a prerequisite to preparing myself for the Sixers heartbreak that's going to happen in the next 21 days of my life. And just got to prepare, you know, these things happen. Jalen Hurts just got the extendo drafts coming up this week. I mean, we got a lot on the horizon, bright. Phillies are starting to click a little bit. I'm going to a game next week, but I don't know. It's all about the Sixers right now. I'm just not feeling great about it. Um, Then you had Deontay Murray the other night, kind of like going up and making contact with a ref. He he just got suspended. Just a lot of weird shit going on in the NBA playoffs right now. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So, I'll just finish it off with right now we got second round. I'm going to predict is going to be, I think Milwaukee is going to come back guys. I just think it's hard to believe Miami with that team is going to beat Milwaukee. I mean, 
crazier things have happened, right? And coming back from three ones, no easy task. But if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Milwaukee over Miami. So they're going to end up playing the New York Knickerbockers. Imagine New York and Miami in the second round. And then Sixer Celtics. I'm going to be a homer here. I'm going to say it's going to be Sixers Bucks. I think the Bucks are going to be fatigued by then. I'm picking with my heart here. I don't care. I'm saying Sixers are going to get out of the East. Um, the West is going to be fascinating as it has been this first round. I mean, you got LeBron James up three to one now against the number two seeded Grizzlies. And John Moran famously said, I forget what he said about, I ain't worried about the West or we're fine in the West. Um, Comical, you're down 3 1. So the Lakers are going to win that series. The Nuggets are going to win their series. I Wednesday night, I mean, that's the pivotal game five, and it's so tough because I grew up watching all these games and going to waking up late, you know. I mean, waking up early and going to school as I've gotten older, it's so tough for me to do. And I'm I'm just forcing myself to try to step for these games, and I still can't do it. I think Golden State's going to pull it off, especially with Mer or Fox having a little bit of an injury, and you just you gave them life and now they're back. So I think it's going to be Golden State and the Lakers and the T Wolves and the Sun or not the T Wolves the Nuggets and the Suns. I think the Nuggets will beat the Suns unless KD starts clicking by then. And I think Golden State's going to get back to the finals somehow. Curry hasn't even really started clicking to his potential yet. So yeah, I think it's going to be Sixers Warriors. Sixers are going to win. That's it. Okay. So current events, um, not a lot, but a couple here that I wanted to kind of touch on and have fun with. We definitely wanted to get well, – we'll just go to TMZ and see if the story is still on there. But we had our boy Bam Margera who's on the run from law enforcement. And, you know, just – I only wanted to bring it up because my brother and I grew up just being the biggest Viva La Bam fans and Don Vito and Uncle Phil and Ryan. Don, you could just name all the characters. But, you know, Ben is uh, – Bam. I just saw Ben Asker and I said Bam. Bam is really – he's having a hard time now in this life. Um, Just just a lot of stuff ever since the Jackie has split up with him, and he's been going through some shit. I mean, we're, we're praying for him, but I don't know what he's on the run from right now. We're just scrolling and seeing these actors with their bodies being filmed on the beach. It's just, just incredible. We're probably missing Myrtle Beach Show, Shifty and Bobby, Crazy Town from Butterfly, that song Butterfly. They fought each other. Cool. Uh, Alaska Moose is on the loose in a movie theater. Dope. Deo Singer. Classic. Rest in peace. I guess we're not going to get the Bam Margera news that we were hoping for, guys. But I know that he um he's on the run from police. So just Bam, hoping for the best for you, buddy. He provided a lot of entertainment as a kid. And I'm, I'm truly forever in debt. And that uh it just helps. Can't. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring it up. You know, growing up when you watch these shows, like they were so influential on how you would live your your daily life as a kid. You would try to emulate these guys like Jackass and Viva La Bam for me and the kids in our neighborhood. And we would just, you know, how you watch sports and you you do what the, the athletes do and you do watch shows. So we were all into doing Jackass, and doing our own little stunts. And my brother would, you know, be on a scooter riding around and then just like fall in front of a group of people and kids and, just like react and then when they would come to him he would get up and run away and he'd just do all kinds of dumb shit and i remember like our side of the neighborhood would make one and then i've referenced my friends the vespies or two brothers their side of the neighborhood do their other and i remember like their mom would go through their camera and they had to call it jack butt and both of our moms were very like curse sensitive but it was just so funny i always remember jack butt and then they did a stunt with their buddy who ended up breaking his wrist going off a ramp doing some some wild shit and you just you do dumb stuff. So I remember in Viva La Bam, they turned Don Vito into the pet Mexican where they put a sombrero on him and put like salsa in his hat and then chips around it. So uh, our neighbors growing up, blank and bleep. No, I'm just, I, I have so many stories to tell about them and stuff, but I, it's not bad about them. It's bad about me, but I don't really want to do that. And I'm so tempted to uh, John and Chris. Uh, so our neighbors, John and Chris, um, the younger brother, Chris, he... One day he got the designated pet Mexican title, unfortunately. So we like, I remember we had him. It was so fucked up. We had him like in tears crying as we were filling my dad's. We put my dad's sombrero because my dad is giant sombrero. We put it on his head and we dumped like a bag of Tostito scoops around the perimeter of there. And then I think we put a ramekin on the top or something. I can't remember what because we didn't pour it in direct the salsa into my dad's. We were just eating chips and calling him our pet Mexican. And yeah, most of you guys probably won't think anything of that, but I thought that was a real little. A little gem of a treat. I just wanted to bring up. Um, 
Another thing, my boss just sent me an article the other day about how uh, let's let's bring this one up, guys, so we can all terrify you. But don't worry, no one needs to be more terrified than me. We talked about uh, a couple studies on here that you know some habits correlate to some bad some bad results, and your boy's in trouble, guys. All right, we got a couple of orifices in our body, we got our bunghole, we got our nose, we got our ears, and we got our mouth. I don't think I'm missing any. Um, my ears. And my nose, and probably my mouth, are all in trouble. In episode whatever, we talked about the study that correlated picking your nose with uh, Alzheimer's. So, I mean, just consider me a victim at this point of you know the Alzheimer's disease. I mean, we're 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 in trouble. Um, but now I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, AirPods, okay. You will not really find a more frequent flyer of the the one ear AirPod Club than me. I mean, pretty much everything I'm doing, I li- this is the reason I do a podcast is because I listen to a an ungodly amount of different podcasts. I mean, I listen to c- mostly comedy ones just for fun, but I listen to a couple sports ones, a couple serious ones. Like obviously, I listen to Joe Rogan and listen to his when he has n- neurophysicists and mycologists and astrophysicists, and but I love his episodes with comedians. So. I love taking in content when I'm listening to an audio book, I'm listening to a podcast and listen to music. I always have one AirPod and I'm going shop and I have one and I'm doing the dishes. I have one and I'm taking a shit. I have one. And like, it's just, it's every, everywhere I go, I have an AirPod in. So he sent me a thing the other day. Okay. Well, now we got a fact checker on here, guys. So this is a different article, but it says viral Instagram posts. AirPods are essentially microwaving your brain. So I read the post when he sent it to me about how the, the sound is too close to your brain and they're microwaving me. And I was like, Okay, I mean, what are we going to do, right? I mean, for those of you who vape and smoke cigarettes and drink coffee and drink a lot of alcohol, like we have our vices. I smoke weed, and then my other bad vice can be frying my brain and giving myself Alzheimer's by picking my nose. So let's just call a spade a spade. We're even, right? You have your fun, I have mine. So false to make away from your brain. Here's why. Will playing your tunes on AirPods damage your brain? Experts say no, but unproven claims that Apple's popular wireless earpieces, AirPods, are dangerous because they emit high levels of radiation close to your brain are cropping up on social media, In quotes. A lot of people ask me why I wear these headphones that I have a cord instead of wearing AirPods, a man says in a video posted on Instagram on August 2nd. The answer is quite simple, because AirPods are essentially microwaving your brain. And then, see, you get these fucking dingbats on here that think their word is gospel. They make one post, and now you got retards like my boss sending me direct messages on Instagram about how I'm frying my brain. Hey, fuck you, dude. I'm taking a shit. I don't need to hear about frying my brain while I'm taking a shit and frying my brain as I'm reading it. <laughs> so um, this bozo goes on to say, they emit extremely high levels of EMFs, he goes on to say. These EMFs release radiation, and the last place you want to release radiation is in your brain. That's essentially what you're doing by wearing AirPods. Post was flagged as part of Facebook's efforts to combat <laughs> false news and misinformation. Way to go, Elon. So bolster's case, the video narrator cites a 2019 article with a headline that reads, more than 250 scientists warn EMF from wireless devices such as Apple, Apple AirPods poses cancer risk. I mean, if I'm going to go out, like, I fucking enjoyed myself. I was taking in content. I was laughing, you know? You're taking a shit thinking about whatever, your fucking Starbucks order, and I'm sitting there taking a shit, listen to Are You Garbage, listen to if your team mascot as a high school kid deems you garbage or not. If you haven't listened to that podcast, by the way, Are You Garbage, uh, Kevin Ryan, H. Foley, two guys from Philly, who I'm just, I fucking love these guys, and I'm not famous, I'm a nobody, but I think it's definitely my dream to go on their show one day. I created my podcast, like, I think a month before I found out what theirs was and I saw the garbage name. I was like, bro, it's just, that's fate right there. You know what I mean? And they're, they're killing it. They're blowing up. And hopefully one day I'll be able to have a 10th of their success. And I shout them out all the time on Instagram. I comment on their shit cause I love them and I just love sharing positivity. And those guys are incredible. They essentially have comedians on and ask some questions like, did you drink milk with dinner and just all these funny questions. And just at the end, they determined if you're, if you're trashy or classy and it's just, it's hilarious. Um, so anyway, like we're trying to figure out this guy's this claims is it's grossly inconsistent with views of health agencies says Ken Foster. 
What are EMFs? Electromagnetic fields are a combination of electric and magnetic fields of energy, radiation, or radiation, which are produced by electricity. This radiation is categorized as high-frequency EMFs or ionizing, which is produced by things like X-rays and gamma rays, and low- to mid-frequency EMFs. Although prolonged exposure to ionizing EMFs could cause, could harm human. All right, guys, I'm going to retard. Although prolonged exposure to ionizing EMFs could harm humans, low-level EMFs are thought to be harmless, according to the National Institute of Environmental Health Services. The, the FDA said that the scientific consensus shows that non-ionizing radiation is not a carcinogen and at or below the radiation radio frequency exposure limits set by the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, non-ionizing radiation has not been shown to cause any harm to people. Okay, so lost all my listeners, but in the meantime, I did find a way to defend myself and feel better, so uh, I can happily report back that that is fake news, Josh, and to my listeners, your AirPods are not frying your brains, so fuck off, faggot. <laughs> um, Aaron Rodgers to the Jets, I don't know how you guys think about that. I think that has the potential to be one of the greatest catastrophes in the sports uh, the biggest diva going to the biggest market, and it could be absolute open season. I mean, he – we just don't know, guys. It's I just get a text on my personal phone while I'm doing my podcast from you, Ike, you fucking little work customer. Leave me alone, dude. So um, last story I kind of wanted to get into I just thought was funny and kind of uh, – there's going to be Repubs and there's going to be Democrats that are upset. The, the mouthpiece for both of them was just – Eliminated in the last two days. So Don Lemon got axed. Carl Tuckerson got it. Carl Tuckerson. Tucker Carlson got axed. So um, I don't really have much to make of it. I don't watch either of them. I don't really care. I just see them both on Instagram and see clips. Don Lemon clips just make me laugh. And uh, I mean, I obviously am leaning right, but I don't care for cable news at all. And I, from my ignorant, non-informed political views, it seemed like Tucker Carlson was a pretty big ratings bonanza, and so was Don Lemon for, I mean, at least as strong as they could get on CNN. So I was pretty surprised by that, and who knows? I don't really care. Uh, one last story. Uh, Detroit Lions, they got caught up in some gambling. I don't know if you guys saw that. They were facing some suspensions. I just wanted to touch on that because I kind of thought this is weird where now in the MMA, I mean, in the UFC, there's a couple scandals going on right now, but when you're promoting DraftKings on every commercial and you have DraftKings in the octagon and DraftKings on the sideline and these guys are doing a little bit, like, what do you expect? It's all you're doing is shoving it down people's throats and then some of these players get caught. Like, I'm not condoning it by any means, but I'm also not really going to, like, condone them for doing it. You know what I mean? Fuck, I just fucked it up. I'm not going to condemn them for doing that, nor do I condone it. How about that? So, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, NFL draft, like I said, is this week going to the UFC next week. If I can maybe get my nephew or my sister or my brother-in-law on a podcast episode with some foreign equipment there, I will definitely do so, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do that. So just wanted to get one on here, kind of talk about some current events. I guess I'll go on uh YouTube real or one last check to make sure I'm not missing out on any fun little current events other than the singers of that song. You're my sugar fly. You're my butterfly, sugar, baby. They beat each other up at a concert the other night. That's pretty dope. Um, Succession. I almost didn't want to do an episode of the podcast tonight because I'm dying to watch the episode. But guess what? Now I get to record an episode and then watch it. Best of both worlds. For those of you who don't watch it, show on HBO all about like a, a family dynasty, for lack of a better term. Uh, the father's company and the father's getting older, declining health. And there's a struggle for power amongst the siblings. It's fucking awesome. Incredible acting. Amazing writing. So getting ready to go watch episode five. It's been another episode of Verbal Garbage. Thank you all for listening. Please continue to share, support, do whatever you can to help this grow, guys. Um, I Trust me, any little comment, you know, my my coworker the other day told me her boyfriend's been listening to a couple episodes. Last last week when I did my, my one episode, my jiu-jitsu coach, who I fucking haven't seen in like two or three months at this point now, called me like cracking up saying he just listened to it. I was on my Peloton, just like, you know, kind of getting the bad vibes out from work that day, sweating it out. And then I get him calling me, telling me that. And I'm just like smiling from ear to ear. I can't contain it. And 
yeah, obviously I joke around all the time saying I want to retire and I'm ready to get famous off the pot. I know it's not going to just be like that, but why the fuck can't I try? You know why there's people out there. You look at Barstool Sports on Instagram, you see these some of these podcasts that they're promoting nowadays. I mean, like I can't get a little bit of an audience, you know. My problem is trying to narrow down, like if I want to just do like current events and comedy shit, sports stuff, I'm kind of doing a mixture of both. And I know a lot of people don't like sports that listen and I'm trying to figure out a way, but I also, it's like hard to get on here by yourself and fill an hour. So these 25 to 45 minute episodes, I try to get a detailed list throughout the week of what I can talk about and just have fun on here. And that's what it's all about. I come in here, I have a good time. Whoever wants to listen, please listen. I've been begging my sister Jenny to listen. She's finally supporting a little bit. Um, Just nothing but love to all you guys who support me. I mean, this is a huge passion project of mine. I'm still still biting the bullet. I'm probably going to get that MacBook in the next couple of weeks here. Get a nice setup in here going where I can try to get, I don't know, maybe more than one person here. Hopefully two at a time, like two to three. I don't know. It's all a work in progress, but... Also, I'm not opposed to taking my computer and my stuff to someone's house and interviewing them. I mean, it's all, it's just for fun, guys. Just get me more confident talking to people, getting my thoughts out in the world, not caring about what people think. So anyone who's been along with me for the ride and the journey, I love you. I appreciate you. Trust me. It makes my day when I hear people are listening. So thank you guys again for listening. Catch you next week. Peace.